on this episode of Slancha. We find ourselves in beautiful Sydney, Nova Scotia, home to Breton Brewing Company. Founded on a shared passion for beer and the Cape Breton spirit, we'll find out how this craft brewery went from being a simple dream to a wild success with the support of the community around them. Located in the heart of Cape Breton Island, the Breton Brewing Company was founded by an engineer and a teacher who both dreamed of something a little bit outside the norm. Brian and Andrew now offer a unique taste of Cape Breton, and I was eager to sit down with them both to find out just how the idea for the brewery was born. I am uh, the co-owner here at Breton Brewing along with uh, Andrew Morrow. So um, starting out, we were around a little over four years uh, old now as a brewery. So starting out, we shared a lot of the same hats. We were doing a lot of the brewing and, and canning and, and, and every, a little bit of everything, but we, we've since uh, kind of divided our roles a little bit. So tell me how Breton Brewing got started. Where did it, where did that idea come from? Yeah, uh, I guess from my side, uh, I went to university. Uh, I took engineering in Halifax and uh, myself and my wife, we'd always go to different brew pubs and uh, Garrison was around and Propeller. So they, they, that was a big influence on me. I loved going in, talking to the brewers. And uh, I still remember the first time trying an IPA um, in Halifax and just being, you know, wondering what is this? And then after that, I did a lot of, uh, a bit of traveling with, uh, to different breweries and do brewery, brewery tours. And I got into home brewing in 2008, 2009 and uh, just got really into that. Uh, so I moved back to Sydney, to Cape Breton in, in 2010, and I started uh, brewing in my, like all grain batches in my yard and in my driveway, and, and I got really into it. And um, I was doing consulting engineering at the time, which I enjoyed, uh, but I, I wanted to do, follow my passion, which I, I was now brewing. Um, I met Andrew, uh, the other co-owner here, when I was uh, moved back, and he was also in, interested in it. And there was no brewery yet in the Sydney area, so we thought it was a good opportunity to uh, to try that out. I mean, entrepreneurship wasn't really in my blood. Like my family uh, doesn't is, doesn't. I don't come from uh, entrepreneurs, but I really I've always wanted to to do my own thing, follow a passion, and it was a good opportunity to do that. Yeah, yeah, wow, wonderful. Did you know that it would become what it is today? Uh, oh, definitely not. No, we, we figured that it was uh, a good opportunity because there wasn't a craft uh, brewery here. Uh, we knew that the trend was there in, in North America and in Canada. So it was a good timing, I think, but we didn't expect the reception that we got. I mean, since we've opened our doors, the uh, support we've gotten it has been amazing. And the we, we're really uh, impressed with the demographic that we get. We get all ages. Uh, everybody um, has fell in love with, with uh, craft beer, not just a specific demographic. And in, in this, the brewery here, the tap room has come a space for people to get together, for friends to meet up, and, and lots of new friendships have been made here. It's really nice to see. Brian, how important is it to you to be able to run your business here in Cape Breton? Uh, that's the big reason why we started it here. So originally when I came home, it was, uh, I was uh, doing consulting engineering, but I, I was trying for years to get a job back in Sydney uh, or in Cape Breton area where I, where I was raised. And uh, we love it here. I know uh, my wife and I and our family, we like to spend as much time as possible, even on our vacations uh, around Cape Breton. So we wanted to uh, open a business here so we could raise our families here, uh, you know, help add to the local economy, create a, a, a business that could hopefully employ some people. Um, so, you know, being in Cape Breton is very important to us. And, and as we grow and 
um, add more employees. We, we definitely, even more so, you know, just want to you know, have our roots in Cape Breton. Um, and yeah, and I think it's been working out so far and we're, we're looking forward to many years to come. From dream to reality, this dynamic duo seemed to be making strides in the craft beer market. Next, I sat down with Andrew to learn more. So Andrew, tell me how Breton Brewing got started. What's your role here and uh, where did it come from? We were, uh, it was kind of a brainchild of ours back in 2013. Uh, we started kind of building the idea just at home. Um, I was a teacher by trade and Brian was an engineer, my business partner by trade. Um, it started in 2013 and we were coming up with this at home. We thought that the market was kind of right for this kind of movement. Um, we then kind of dove more into the financial side of things and we were home brewing at the time. We won a couple of awards across Canada as well. Um, so we knew we had a good product and we just wanted to see if there was an opportunity here and there was nothing in Sydney at the time so it was, you know, right for the taking. Are you from Sydney originally? Yeah, from Sydney, born and raised. Yeah, I went to school here my whole life um, except for university for two years in PEI and uh, yeah, born and raised, yeah. Nice. And how does it uh, feel to be able to have your business here at home? Feels great. I mean, uh, most people uh, from the East Coast, are, not most people, but some people have to go west to work. So to be able to stay home and, and provide for our families and provide for so many other families that are working for us and with us, um, it's it's great. To, it's a great feeling for sure. And you know, to give back and uh, something that people can be proud of. Um, you know, products um, all over Canada can compete can, can compete with all the breweries across Canada. You know, that's that's what we want to do. And did you and Brian um, grow up together then too? We grew up as uh, sort of enemies, I can say. Uh, I was from Sydney and he was from Coxeath area, so it's uh, kind of like Jacqueline and Hyde almost as far <laughs> as uh, schools are concerned, but uh, we played hockey against each other growing up. Uh, so I knew him from that side of things. We really met uh, uh, when we came back from university and started home brewing and living back in, in Sydney. Um, his, I went to school with his wife and my wife went to school with his wife, so we kind of met through his wife. Um, and uh, we found, fell in love with home brewing together and the rest is kind of history. <laughs> Wonderful. So I suppose you didn't think back then that you'd maybe eventually have a business together. Yeah, no, nothing uh, was really sparked again until 2013 that we kind of seriously started discussing it once we won a couple of awards on the, on the Canadian homebrew scale. Um, and we both kind of wanted to give back more than we were doing, kind of, in, you know, even though teaching is very rewarding and the same with engineering, of, of course, but um, we're kind of on a charitable scale and, and things like that and to be able to provide for people and not, you know, have people leave out to the west to work. Um, that was two, you know, huge cases for, for what we were doing now. Yeah. So how, how does it feel to be able to have the business here and how many jobs do you provide? So uh, right now we have about 25-ish employees, depending on the season we go up or we go down a little bit. Um, so that's, we started with just two, Brian and myself, and then we added a third shortly after there, but you know, in four, four short years, it feels like we've grown to 25. Next up on Slancha, I meet up with Breton Brewing's Director of Sales to find out what makes this island beer so special. And I get to sit down with their head brewer, whose passion for chemistry and microbiology led him down a path he would never have dreamed of. Coming off and on here for what, the last three, three and a half years. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm here on vacation. I'm just here with my brother-in-law, Rob. We're just enjoying some of the local uh, microbrewery. Oh, I just love it. It's just like uh, being in your basement, your garage, or everything else. It's just a fun spot, uh, really relaxing, everything else. It's great. I mean, like, uh, microbreweries are just like uh, the next generation of, uh, of, of bars in Canada. Like, it's just not, just not Cape Breton, but everywhere else, microbreweries are the next best thing in the world. Located in beautiful Sydney on Cape Breton Island, the Breton Brewing Company is forging their beer, surrounded by the love of their home and community. Before I sampled the brews for myself, I wanted to find out more about the brewery and the beer that they were crafting. To do this, I sat down with the director of sales, Cameron. So Cameron, tell me a little bit about your role here at Breton Brewing. Well, I'm the director of sales here at Breton Brewing. So basically, I, I guess that's kind of a glorified name for a sales rep. Um, my responsibilities are mostly outside of the tap room. So I deal with uh, the liquor boards, for instance, like the NSLC and uh, our tap room accounts, so licensee accounts like bars and restaurants and things like that. 
And how do you like that job? It's pretty fantastic. Yeah, um, yeah. It'd be. I think it'd be. I'd be hard pressed to find a better job that I like more for sure. And are you from Cape Breton originally? Originally, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'm from not far from the brewery, probably about a two kilometers away, um, and grew up in the area, and uh, you know, love it here. It's it's great being being here. And how did you uh, how did you meet the guys? Well, I've known Brian since we were quite young. Brian and I would have met uh, at the golf course probably when we were oh, maybe 12 or 13, and Brian would be a couple years younger than me. Uh, so we grew up playing golf together, um, and you know, as we got older, we always kind of stayed in touch. Uh, Andrew I met a little bit later, um, a little bit kind of before the brewery opened when Brian and Andrew were making homebrew. Um, and yeah, that, I kind of met him through Brian, and uh, yeah, we've, we've gotten to know each other really well, obviously, through the years. So. Do you think that you could say that you saw Brian and Andrew homebrewing from an early age? Now, I realize as I say that, that sounds weird, but were they always passionate about creating things? Absolutely. So I, I lived away while kind of Brian and Andrew were doing a lot of their homebrewing outside of Cape Breton. Um, but kind of coming home and always seeing Brian, whether it was over the holidays or whether it was over summer vacation, it was always something that he was incredibly passionate about, and, and Andrew as well. Uh, they were always talking about, you know, this specific beer or that beer, or they were, they were trying to make this or that. Um, so, yeah, it was definitely something that you could see kind of long before the brewery opened that they had a passion for. Yeah, so my role is based out of Halifax. We have uh, a lot of licensee or bar accounts up there, as well as the head office with the NSLC. So a lot of my dealings are with that. I do a lot of traveling, so I do cover uh, PEI, uh, the amount of work that we do in New Brunswick, Newfoundland, etc. Uh, so it makes it a little bit easier to travel out of there, but I'm down here at least once a month for meetings with the guys uh, to check on kind of everything locally. And in the summertime, it's a little bit more than that even because we have so much going on. It must be nice to come home all the time. It's fantastic. And my parents are still here, so it's great to be able to come home and spend a little time with the family. Uh, I, I tell everyone I, I get the best of both worlds, which is, which is really nice. And how, do, um, how does it feel for you to have the brewery here in Sydney? It's pretty special, you know, I think that Cape Breton in general, uh, you know, we're a very proud people and I think it's been very incredible seeing people in the community really get behind a local business and really help it to strive. It, it's been really cool. Yeah, it sounds, it sounds like it's been a wonderful journey for you guys. Yeah, absolutely. You know, seeing people that have, you know, in the past maybe not been craft beer drinkers but have really wanted to to come and you know support us be involved in the things that we're involved in here and have them transition into now being craft beer lovers where they won't drink anything but craft beer that's been really special to see after chatting with cameron i wanted to find out more about their brewing process to do this i spoke with their head brewer ian so i've been uh sort of the head brewer for the past year and a half maybe um, I'm in charge of taking the beer from grain to uh, basically the packaging point and making sure it's all ready to go in the can. That sounds like a lot of fun. Did you always want to be a brewer? <laughs> no, I wouldn't say so. I, um, I was doing uh, chemistry in college and all of a sudden a uh, opportunity came up to go to brewing school and I just went for it and I ended up loving it. And, yeah. So you loved chemistry. Did you love beer? Did that help? Or was it just kind of came after you learned how to make it? I did, I did love beer. So I, it's just the perfect meld of like chemistry and microbiology and creating a great product that I love to enjoy and, yeah. Yeah, and are you from here originally? No, I'm not. I'm, I'm from Vancouver Island. Wow. So well, how'd you come out here? A girl. It's always the story. That'll do it. Yeah. We met when we were both in school in Vancouver, and I got a job here, followed her here, and uh, we're still together and still chugging along. And how have you found uh, the people? Be honest, it's okay. The people are fantastic. Some of the nicest people you'll ever meet really, like, literally take your shirt off your back for you. Nice people. Yeah, uh, I love working here. I'm, I've, I'm really spoiled to be working here. It's a great opportunity. I work with some amazing people. Uh, my boss is like, can't be, I can't work for nicer people. Um, I'm just, um, I had a great job. Maybe you could uh, tell me a little bit, Ian, about uh, some of the beer that you make here. Okay, well, um, so we do a really wide range of beer here. We try to hit uh, as many niches as we can. Um, it's all very drinkable, uh, quite approachable, 
uh, but uh, we do our best to make sure that it is quality. Absolutely. And uh, do you get to develop any of the, the newer recipes? Are you making some of your own beer? Yeah, so that's, that's part of my duties now as, uh, I guess, head brewer. Um, our newest beer was the Smash. Uh, that was a recipe that I developed, which um, it sold out of the tap room in about six hours, so we were really pleased with that. Wow. Um, and that's just a, it's, it's a great part of my job is to be able to be creative and uh, use my skills to create new products. So when you're making a beer, is it literally down to a science and you know how it's going to taste when you finish it, or is it kind of just like, I think I know and we'll it's see? A, it's a lot of experimentation and it's like, let's throw these things together. I think it'll be good. And uh, do you have like a favorite style or a favorite beer right now? Right now, um, I would say like something like an India Session Ale is my favorite style to go to. Something light and drinkable. It's summer. It's like it's hot out. We don't want anything too heavy. So um, I think those styles are really uh, where I'm going to right now. Next up on Slancha, from juicy new summer favorites to the brew that started it all. We get to sit down and sample some of the amazing beer at the Breton Brewing Company in Sydney, Nova Scotia. I am drinking the seven year and it's great. I love it. It's uh, similar to a local beer that I have, a local uh, microbrew that I have at home from Predican, and it's um, uh, Patagonia. Tastes similar, so I've been drinking it here for the last half hour. Oh, I tell them it's easy to find. Uh, it's uh, a great spot. You, know, you sit out in the back in the sun, you sit inside. It's, it's just a beautiful place. Yes, I would. I'll recommend it to anybody I know. Located in Sydney, Cape Breton, Breton Brewing Company uses their passion and love of the island to create some of the province's finest brews. After learning about the origins of the brewery with Brian and Andrew and meeting some of the exceptional staff, it was finally time to sit down and try the wares produced by the Breton Brewing Company for myself. Okay, so we'll, we'll walk through a couple of our beers. Uh, we're going to start off with our Island Time Lager. So our Island Time Lager is, uh, it's a 4.3%. Uh, easy drinking Munich Ellis lager. Um, we kind of refer to this as a little bit of a gateway beer. So for that person that comes into the craft brewery that says, well, you know, I don't really like hoppy beers or, you know, I don't really like dark beers. Uh, this is a beer you can kind of give anyone on, you know, a beautiful summer's day or, or any time of year for that matter. And, uh, and no one's going to have any complaints. It's just a nice, smooth, easy drinking beer uh, mm. that can kind of, for the masses, if you will. Ah. Yeah. A for the masses beer. Yeah. All right. So 4.3%, very easy drinking. Let's have a cheers first. It smells beautiful. Yeah. Mm. Oh, my gosh. That's so nice. Yeah, almost like a little bit of, uh, we kind of say like a, like a bread and butter flavor, you know? Just a, yeah. a nice, crisp, uh, you know, easy drinking beer. Easy drinking beer, but it's got um, quite a bit of um, like a, a, some sort of fruit undernote to it. I can't quite place it. Yeah, we, we, like, to, we like to say bread. There's a little, little loaf of bread and mm. kind of butter on the can, and that's kind of what we like to use to describe it. And everyone's palate is mm. a little bit different, too. So lots of people, you'll get some different notes than, yeah. than, than probably I will or, or others. Very fresh, lovely, yeah. really nice. Um, all right, next up we have uh, a relatively new beer for us. This is our Let's Jam. It's a strawberry rhubarb sour. Uh, it comes in at 4%. Um, and we just launched this in, I guess, in April. Uh, so it was new to the NSLC in May. Um, we made this with kind of patios and beaches in mind. Uh, we use real strawberry and rhubarb puree uh, in the mix. Uh, so when the guys are done making it, you should see them. They're, they're kind of covered in, uh, in, in strawberry uh, puree. The color of this is intense. Yeah. Like... Is that from the strawberries, the rhubarbs? Or yeah, it's, 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 it's absolutely from the strawberries, yeah. So uh, very, very intense, really cool smell. And it is a sour style beer, but we like to say it's a little bit more tart than, oh you know what I gosh. mean, than, than sour. I had to smell it. Oh, yeah. Cheers. Oh, this smells amazing. I know, I, I'm just, I'm caught up in the scent of it right now. You're going to love it. Oh, Wow. Oh, it's so good. Yeah. Oh, it's just like um, 
I mean, jam. It's so jammy. Yeah. And, and that's and hence the name, Let's Jam. Let's exactly. Jam. And it's got the double, you know, everyone plays music and instruments in Cape Breton, so we've got the little the little double meaning there. Nice. Yeah. And uh, and I love that little bit of uh, tartness that kind of kicks in there at the end. That yeah, rhubarb flavor exactly. is delicious. Exactly. You get kind of the sweetness of the strawberries in the front, and then you get that little, like, kick of rhubarb on the back to kind of make it tart. Oh, that's so good. Okay, so this is our Black Angus. This so is not the Black this Angus. This is our Black Angus. What? Yeah. This guy? What's yeah. this one? So that's our Sons of Hector. <gasps> Yeah. I totally thought they would be different colors. Yeah, so we get that all the time. So Black Angus, uh, like we talked about earlier, is named after Giant McCaskill, and that was his nickname, Black Angus. So a lot of people will perhaps expect a black beer, but it's not. Uh, it's an IPA. Oh. Yeah. So we did a pale ale. Okay. Um, this is a little bit stronger, so it comes in at 6.2%. Okay, definitely. And a little, bit, a little bit more bitterness, too. Mm. So, you know, you get the hop characteristic and a little bit of bitterness, but if you if you give it a small nose, you'll get some nice citrus out of it. Oh, wow. Yeah, so you get some nice grapefruit flavor, mm. uh, and, and, and you get it on the nose as well. Oh, wow, that's beautiful. Yeah, so this is our, this is our number one seller. This is our... This was your first one as well, beer. too, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, this was our original kind of that kicked off the, the brewery, if you will. Oh, wow. Mmm. So you get a little bit of that hop characteristic and a little bit of that, you know, like a little slight punch That's uh, a right nice, off the bat. Nice and then idea. it really smooths out on the back end with that, you know, with the fruit flavor and the grapefruit. Yeah, yeah. that's lovely. I, mm. Yeah, I can see why that's so popular. That it's got a nice, nice like a uh, hop kick to it. Yeah. A little bit of that citrus as you're talking about. Really nice mouthfeel. So you totally confused me because I absolutely thought that these were reversed. So this is the Sons of Hector. Yeah, this is the Sons of Hector. So uh, again, we talked about the name. It's named after the the ship, the Hector, that came from Scotland um, and landed in, eventually landed in Picto, and then uh, a lot of people that were on there migrated down to Cape Breton. So we wanted to pay a little bit of homage to that. Um, this is a brown ale. Okay. Uh, five percent. Um, very, very drinkable. So we always like to say, don't drink with your eyes. People will see a dark colored beer and they might get a little bit scared of it. Um, even though it's dark in color, it still drinks like a very light beer. It's mm -hmm. still an ale. So, mm -hmm. cheers. Beautiful color. Yeah. Oh, so gorgeous. You get some nice, you get a little bit of, uh, a little bit of chocolate and caramel undertones oh, wow. in there. Yeah, immediately. Yeah. Really. And you'll really get that on the back end as well. Just a bit of smoke there to it as yeah, well. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Oh, that's lovely. Very nice. Oh, so yeah. beautiful. Yeah, very, very nice. I mean, I know it's refrigerated, but it has this kind of like a warm, inviting sensation about it. Yeah, and that's what, you know what, that's why it's, I mean, I, I drink it year round, <laughs> but it's definitely uh, it's definitely a popular beer in the wintertime. You know yeah. what I mean? People think kind of snow outside and cozy and warming. Yeah. It definitely falls into that category yeah. for a lot of people. For Absolutely, sure. it's delicious. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Go have a little more. You have a little bit more. Yeah. Well, I have to taste it again, right? Yeah, it's kind you of good sure. chocolate, roasty <laughs> kind of warm yeah. sensation to it. It's Oh, it's wonderful. Yeah, absolutely. This is lovely. I've really enjoyed these. I know I've had at least one of these before. Each of us here have a different favorite because it <laughs> kind of depends on your mood and, and what you're feeling. It absolutely does. Exploring how Breton Brewing got started with Brian and Andrew had been a heartwarming story. It's always wonderful to be able to work and live in the communities that shaped us. And seeing this brewery thrive in their hometown was an amazing experience. But beyond the culture they are creating from their obvious love of the island, Breton Brewing is also creating some exceptional beer, steeped in history and crafted with love.